and welcome everyone. Welcome to the big show. I am your host, Jerk. How's everybody doing? It sounds like you're happy, and I know why you're happy. It has been a month since our last in-studio audience, and well, you can blame the writer's strike for that. Apparently, the writers are no longer wanting paid and slices of American cheese, but have the audacity to ask for slices of American white cheddar, as if we can afford that. So because of that, I have been forced to learn how to write cue cards, mount them to the walls, and yada, yada, yada. But in the meantime, I learned me how to... Come on, wait. But in the... Time it learned me how to do... Who wrote this? You're fired. Oh, right. Well, we had a whole slew of brand new up-and-comers burst onto the scene, and I am happy to report that we have one of the budding new superstars here for you today. So, ladies and gentlemen, join me in welcoming out the Tech Tree Tier 8 Italian Battleship. Give it up for Le Pen. Lepanto, a ship I had been low-key wanting to be added to this game for some time. Better late than never, and I'm here to report it is worth the wait. I just had this sneaking suspicion that while not being stated publicly, Ouija knew the Tech Tree Tier 8 ships had been mostly mediocre at best, and I thought maybe, just maybe, they would increase the base secondary range on this ship, and my eyes got as large as saucer plates when I set mine up and saw they each reach an impressive 9.5 kilometers. That's 24 90 millimeter guns with 26 millimeters of penetration and an additional 18 barrels of 152s with 46 millimeters of penetration but that's not all specking all into them with your commander modules will get you down to 3.6 second reloads on that 152s and maybe two seconds on the 90 millimeters add on top of that that the secondary booster and maybe you can understand why i yoinked my epic secondary mod off schlieffen and put it on its new home so let's get the commander modules up on the big screen, and now you can see my approach to the ship hasn't changed at all from Veneto, accuracy through volume, volume of the main battery that consists of 12 381mm guns that shoot all over the place, and accuracy through volume of secondaries. But what good is 800,000 dpm of secondaries if you can't get to somewhere to use them? Well that's what the RGA mod's for, and that's the Italian battleship gimmick, in it, gov? With the RGA mod on here, I can spot destroyers in smoke, and when they get spotted, they tend to vaporize quite quickly. Cruisers need to be mindful as well, and even battleships. If they aren't angled, these secondaries become quite blisteringly painful. The eagle-eyed amongst you may have noticed fellow CC and Ultra Chad Chili Games is on the red team, and originally I had planned on using a different replay for this video, but this match, I think, is far more interesting. And for anyone curious, I'm going to link to Chili's perspective down below, as I always find it fascinating to hear the thought process from opposing sides. And really, this battle is going to come down to two teams trying to throw, and Chili and I trying to prevent that. Okay, okay, not entirely, not everyone, but many of them. Anyway, as I was saying, the whole thing with these Italian battleships when turned into secondary behemoths is, a surprise, surprise, positioning. You want to be in a spot to use these secondaries, and preferably when you can have the red spotted and you can cruise around in smoke. When my friendly destroyer went into B, that was it. I had to go in there to support them because my motto is if you're going to be part of the battleship problem, you've got to do cruiser things, and cruiser things means support your destroyers. And in this situation, it also means cover your flank. The red team is pushing through C, and while it's going to cost me a little HP as I expose my side, it won't matter how much HP I have left, if the red team comes through here. So I have turned back because we've got one battleship reversing, we've got another one on a three hour tour, and our destroyer is weak. And on top of that, we know the last red destroyer is over here, so it behooves me to help this flank whilst we have these three ships relatively 
contained. And there is the Udaloi, and I am turning to get the secondaries going. Uh, and you can see just how quickly these secondaries tend to melt destroyers that are spotted. Um, the Udaloi is going to get some porps off here. I'm sure I'm probably being pinged of like, everybody sink this guy and watch my health slowly, well, not so slowly, disappear because I'm going to take one torp here, maybe two torps, but it's going to come down just to the water. <laughs> we're at 599. Get the heal off, pop the smoke, and we have dropped spots. And we picked up a double strike right there. So, you, that could have gone quite poorly, but instead we walk out alive. And not just alive, we are also on the Kraken hunt now. So, things are looking a little out of control still. <laughs> yeah, there's our destroyer with very little health. There's our Flanders with lots of health. And our Palmern, I believe, is requesting for some support right there. And uh, they got a lot of health, but I need time to heal up over here. So my plan is to get on to sea. Well, maybe our Iowa does something. Get on to sea, get some heals off, flip this cap, and then kind of assess the situation from there. Another big concern that I have right now is this Zeton. If they turn in towards A and get me spotted, that could be the end of our hero. They obviously have much longer range secondaries than me. Uh, they have a lot more health. Our Iowa does not appear to be doing too much over there, but fortunately, so fortunately, this Zeton is kind of just parked behind the island and every second that they spend parked behind that island, is another second that I get towards my next heal, and every second that I get towards this next heal gets me to the point where I can engage more of the red team. We need to do a quick assessment of the red team. Okay, there's Chile. I'm gonna go ahead and pre-select him with my secondaries. Um, I'm really kind of concerned where Chile is, obviously because he's a good player, but also because that Petropavlos can really put out some damage if you are not angled exactly correctly. So I, it's interesting right here. I know Chile was thinking that I was going to come out through the south side of this island, but I do not. However, <laughs> you're gonna see Chile take a blind fire and thinking that maybe I'm right in front of me. I don't I know it's pretty soon. But I'm actually just stopping here because I cannot risk getting hit. I need to get this cap flip. And if I got reset, even if it didn't kill me, that would be bad because we are behind on points. So I'm just sitting here waiting for that Zeton, hoping that they don't come out. There's Chili's blind fire. And uh, I'm just sitting here waiting. And I'm actually going to reverse because my thought is now we want strength in numbers. If I go out south here... I'm going to be exposed to the Zeton. I'm going to be exposed to the entire red team that is now to the south of B. Whereas if I reverse here, I don't really care about our Iowa off to the side who is not really doing anything. I don't need to support them. I need to go support the center of the map because that's where everything's going to be decided by now. So that's where I'm going to go. I'm going to go ahead and let our friendly blues head to the south here. This is what they've been saving all their HP for, I suppose. And I believe sooner or later, Chile actually radars. And that's going to expose my master plan. Um, but it's also going to expose our destroyer. Ooh, Chile will then get to properly sink. But my plan here, there's the radar, is to bomb this Zeton out of existence with these high velocity 381 millimeter guns and oh my god we should have this right and no oh well they're still gonna take that zeton out of the game so i'm not feeling too bad uh i'm probably gonna lose a fair number of my teammates who are all down there uh, but that's why i didn't go that way i want to go up here where my brindisi will support me and our palmern will support me because those players are not out of position now, another interesting point that I can see here is that the, the the red team actually has a pretty good defensive perimeter set up now. Chile's down to the south, and they've got this Mogami in this gap, 
and they could be torping this direction right now. So I've got to play this uh, a little cautiously, but we also have got to start removing these threats and, you know, that Megami. Not so much it's HE for me, but I'm more concerned about it sending torps this way and potentially sinking that Pomeran, who I'm going to need the help from. So I'm just checking in here every time if I can lob my guns over the top and... Uh, Pretty soon, we are going to actually be able to lob them. It looks like the Mogami is in reverse now. So once it says we're clear, which is now, let's fire and see what happens. Sometimes these guns hit. And in this case, they did. And there's Kraken 472 in Lepanto. Now, he doesn't have the angle to actually torp me from there. But if I had gone in, they could have. So... I'm going to go ahead, toss on the smoke, and let's get the party started <laughs> because this is this is what we want to do. I'm looking at the uh, Iowa right there. Just think about this. All right, we're at five. If we had gotten that Zeton, that would have been six. If we got this Iowa, that would have been seven. If we get Chili, that'll be eight. And if we get the last guy, that would have been nine. Shoulda, woulda, coulda. Could have been a clean sweep, but we're not going to as there goes the Iowa. And uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm coming around here fully with the complete intention of just letting my secondaries chew up chili. <laughs> I'm like, I don't even really want to shoot my guns. I don't know. Maybe I'll try and break his guns. Because, look, as soon as I get close, he's going to be able to get some pin angles on me. And he can always break my guns too, which would be a real pain in the butt. And because this is still a, a very close game, look, we're, we're down. We can definitely lose this game. Uh, you know, we don't want to throw, but we still want to have fun. So, yes, my intentions are let's try and break a gun right there. But, of course, the shells go wherever. However, these secondaries, they can uh, chew up. Now, it's interesting because Chili's bow is 25 millimeters, right? 25. So the small secondaries won't pin there, but he's also damage saturated. And then, of course, my secondaries are just shooting into his belt armor, which they can't hit. I'm like, one of them, I thought I had it right there, but no, no, no. Brindisi got it. It's fine. So no six pack, no seven pack, no crazy eights, right? Oh, well, I guess we'll just have to be happy with. Oh, no. Here I am broadside to an Azumo, which should mean death. But for whatever reason, all these Azumas I'm seeing out here right now are shooting HE. This guy did earlier. Surely they've changed their shell type, right? Well, maybe I can get a uh, Citadel or something. Uh, why aren't they shooting me? Am I actually going to get this cap? Doesn't it have like a 20 second reload? Where are its shells? Oh. Oh. <laughs> Here they come, and they're HE, so lulls, and that's going to allow me to get one more salvo off, and we will actually be picking up the six-pack in the Lepanto. Well, I think we can all agree that should be a pretty good game. We're going to get a Dreadnought, Confederate, three close quarters, a double strike, two caps, and we are going to get 2,920 XP. What the heck? Oh, my God. All right, all right, no, no, no. Just listen. Stop the music. I can hear it now. Oh, yes, this is a lucky game. You know, this isn't how this ship normally performs. So, you know what? Let's do it again. Ladies and gentlemen, the Italian tech... Tra oh, we don't have to do this again. <laughs> okay. Well, I wanted to show you this game as well because, you know, it's, yes, I know. It's going to be a crack and we all know, but I want you to be able to see how... I'm playing essentially the exact same way. I'm going in to support destroyers. I'm going in to, actually, I think I nuke almost all of the destroyers in this game. But again, we're going to use our smoke to be able to adjust our position. We're going to use our smoke to be able to get closer to the enemies. And this is just, this is just how I think. I'm not saying you have to. But this is a good representation of how I think you can get the most out of these Italian battleships. Some people are going to want to, you know, try and make them accurate. And I just don't think that's worth it because they're never going to be that accurate. Not this one. There are a couple that are. 
Marco Polo is accurate, Giulio Cesare is accurate, the Roma is accurate, but none of these tech tree ones are going to be. And you know what? Something else, and since this is more casual, <laughs> this game, I was uh, watching Flamu and he was talking about how on PC they always wanted sap secondaries on the tech tree ships there and they didn't get up. They uh, only have, I think there's one premium, Giuseppe Verde. They get sap secondaries on an, on an Italian battleship, excuse me. But here, the uh, premiums do not get sap secondaries. They get the sap main guns, and the tech tree actually gets the sap secondaries. And in my opinion, that makes these ships far more viable than they are in PC. So anyway, we are spotted. Uh, it's probably not a destroyer on B, or I'm guessing my Hayate might actually spot them themselves. Although some torps kind of came through that direction, I imagine they actually are the destroyer that went on to C over there. So I must be getting spotted over on my left hand side, and that's where I'm guessing there are torps coming from now. So. While it does kind of stink to be spotted like this because something over there is firing at me. Something that reloads. Oh, there are torps. Uh, can we dodge? I think we might be able to. Well, we took one. Okay, that tells us that is the small end right there because those torps didn't hit that hard. So, you know what? I'm caught out here in the open. Some people have me spotted. Let's get those secondaries going. But it's going to be time for me to use my smoke and reposition. And I'm going to reposition over to the A cap. And I know that one of my destroyers is going to ping me that they need my support over on C. But I do not think that is the case because here is the radar cruiser. And we've actually got their Ostergotland kind of pinned at the moment. So I would like to get over here before they can escape. And once again, I'm not firing my main guns because I would be spotted from, uh, I think it's 14 or so kilometers away. So I'm just getting into position, taking advantage of the fact that this uh, Massachusetts is spotted. Let's get our secondary start flying. And uh, you can see the, uh, ugh, I hate it when I say you can see, but pay attention, watch the damage start to uh, tickle up a little bit. And I'm going to get into my safe space here pretty soon. Massachusetts won't have me spotted. I'm going to get the Ostergotland spotted with my RGA through the island, and at that point, I kept thinking they might come out and try and nuke me, but they can't really nuke me with those torpedoes. I think I could probably survive almost all of them, maybe all of them, depending on if they hit me in the bow and we did some uh, bow saturation or, or some damage saturation. Anyway, coming around the corner, gonna see this Massachusetts uh, let's watch these accurate guns and uh, eh, not bad but we hit like seven that's not too shabby um, but again our secondaries are still going to be going to town and you can see I've got the there I did it again things to never say in your videos you can see is one of them or as you can see or if you'll notice all of that kind of stuff is just filler commentary that I always, if I'm actually going through and paying attention to what's scripted, I will go back and remove that because it drives me absolutely bonkers. Anyway. <laughs> As does anyway. Ugh. God, pull it together, jerk. But we've got Ostergotland spotted on the right. Massachusetts is going to try and shoot me there. It's not going to do any good. Secondary is so... Ostergotland, why aren't they coming around here? I don't care because I'm still 46 seconds from having my smoke at the ready again. I kept, I kept thinking that they were going to back up and try and tour me, but maybe they know that I've got some support here. But anyway, I've got these uh, guns ready and I'm waiting. So I'm going to let this fire burn out. I'm going to wait for my smoke to get ready and I'm just going to chill here for the time being even though we are down almost three caps but you know we're down two caps technically uh, and we're down one extra ship there's okay that was the petro that was shooting me earlier that's a gc broadside but let's be real these shells are not gonna go where i aim most of the time so if i get one we're gonna call that a win nonetheless that allows me to drop spot 
And now our smoke is ready. I've got my HE loaded. And this Ostergotland, boy oh boy, isn't going to know what hit him. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> the, the creeping smoke screen of death, right? It is a little scary. It should be. And I've had people, like, try and tort me in this before, and they've hit me. You know, it can be done. That's something you got to be aware of as a destroyer, but... Le Bonk. There goes the Dev Strike. I think I'm probably spotted by either Destroyer in the middle again, or maybe it's the uh, Petra Pavlovsk, but... I'm actually turning the opposite way because, again, I don't want to keep extending that direction or I'll be caught in a crossfire. And th let's be real, the red team will probably have nothing else to shoot but me. So I'm using this opportunity and my smoke to turn around and I'm going to be able to approach this situation from the direction that I want to, which is why these Italian battleships are so great. Who needs a concealment mod when you've got smoke? I mean, that's going to allow you to stay concealed for what? It's like 45 seconds? Ah, it'd be kind of sweet if it was longer. Anyway, uh, yeah, Prince Ruprecht. Not sure whose torps those are. Must be the last destroyer. Uh, I'm not really sure where they are, but I can use this channel right here in front of me to kind of narrow down the direction that the torps can be coming from. And if you look at the mini-map, I'm like, hmm... You know what? Our battleships at the back of the map, it might be time for them to, you know, become engaged in this particular battle. It's, it's We don't have that much time left, so I'm going to ping them. I'm like, you come up here and help me. You come up here and help me. And you come up here and help me. And you know what they do? They come up here and help me. What is this game? <laughs> so, once again, I am waiting for my smoke to do my next move. I'm going to angle into this channel because it's going to limit the direction that any torpedoes can come from from that way. And I've switched over to HE because I'm not going to be doing anything to the bow on Jean Bart. So maybe if I can hit him with some HE, I might start a fire. Uh, you know, the Italian HE is nothing to write home about <laughs> by any stretch of the imagination. So we're just going to sit here, look at where everybody is. Uh, they just sank another one of the red ships. So that turns out to be pretty good. I think that was the destroyer that spawned next to me and was asking support but look see they got it and they're gonna be able to flip that cap now so waiting here shooting he at jean bart and look at our battleships all approaching from the south they're actually gonna even get on the cap which is kind of crazy because normally when you when you ping your teammates and you're like i need support they're like negative or they just go somewhere else but i was Really impressed with my teammates here. I was like, by golly, maybe they realize what actually is going on here. So, uh, and we're all in unison too, right? We're not in the same square. We're all in unison. And that's going to allow us to all push together at the same time. My smoke is ready. We are going, whoa, there's the torpedoes. That's why we angled this way in this channel to be able to control where they came, come from. And now I'm going to, uh, are we going to take that one? I don't think we do no we don't and now petro pavlos that's my primary concern that is the ship that i have to remove unless we should spot the destroyer so i've gone ahead and used my smoke again this is going to allow me to get through here look we're in unison that's a beautiful sight i'm not even really paying attention to what's happening on the cap now uh, i've got the petro targeted and uh i'm going to not shoot my guns yet because i'd be oh hello hiate this changes everything, right? I need to slow down. I need the Hayate to get into an area where my secondaries can actually shoot at them. And you know I will shoot my guns at them because that is worth it to remove them from this juncture. So my secondaries are still I'm spotted with the Hydro. No sense in not firing the guns right now at that point. And so we're going to get those all off and not quite... But our secondaries are doing work. Hayate smoking up. And I was pretty certain. Look at all those secondaries in the air. Okay, there we go. And so we uh, managed to pick that one up. And I was like, oh, well, well. Look at this. We've got four ships sunk. And somebody, of course, is still shooting at me. Do you think this Petro will give me the courtesy boop? I don't know if this was intentional or not. <laughs> but... You know what? Good. I want to believe that it is. I want to believe that this Petro is giving me the courtesy boop right here. 
I don't. I hope they recognize that this was for the Kraken, and that they're just like, you know what? Let's give it to him. But he actually survived. Oh, there's the triple horn. That was my first uh, Kraken in this ship, uh, as we know now. Not the last. And I was like, oh my lord, I'm gonna get this Bismarck too. We're gonna have six. And anyway, another good game in the Veneto. That's just how I like to play it, but. Uh, that's gonna wrap it up for this one. If you think we need a 1 million DP for sap secondaries, give this video a like. If you build your Lepanto for accuracy, give the video a dislike. Questions, comments, leave them down below. And if you do are interested in seeing a video drop every, I don't know, once in a while, think about hitting subscribe. Thanks for watching, folks. I will get back out there for another, and we will talk then.